everybody, welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today is an unboxing day, so you're going to get to see all the new things that I have. And also something that I got several months ago that I told you I was going to surprise you with and do a video on, and I never did the video, so I totally forgot about it. So today we're going to go through all that and do all that, and I do have my diesel here. So he sits on my desk now, and um, he's with us in spirit, I hope. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanted to show you is I've been receiving this commercial not only on YouTube, but I believe I saw it on Instagram as well, and then I saw it on Amazon. And I'm always looking for a new and better sketchbook. And right now I have some favorites, but, um, and I'm really enjoying the perfect sketchbook. There's also the, the white canvasy one, which is more of a mixed media style. But today I got a regular sketchbook. It's actually, it's called Artica, A-R-T-I-C-K-A. -A. This is an eight by eight book, and I will show you the pages. I'm very curious to see to see exactly what the pages are going to be like because they're they are 180 GSM, 120 pound or 122 pound paper, which is equivalent to a moleskin book. The moleskin books, I believe, are a lighter weight, which is why I don't care for them usually for watercolor because. Um, they the pages warp a lot and uh, if you use very little water or if you use gouache or whatever I'm sure those books are fine they're just not for me but I I want to get sketching some more whether it be just pencil pen whatever so I thought I'm gonna buy another sketchbook I have another one. Oh, they give me a little Arctica sticker and it says post a photo photo with Arctica note tag, uh, hashtag give with Arctica, and we will send you a link so you can choose which art charity we will donate to. That's really cool. There's also a free warranty on this, so I suppose if your book started to separate or something, um, they would replace it. It says share your drawings on social media, tag us at Arctica to get the chance to win a full year supply. So if you're a sketcher, this could be a good book for you. This is what the inside cover looks like. Kind of interesting. And the pages, let me feel the pages. The pages are very smooth. I would think this would be good for marker maybe. I don't know if marker would go through. The pages are also perforated right at the center. So you, know, you can't see it very well, but they are perforated right there. So you can tear pages out if you'd like to, to keep them or frame them or whatever. There's a ribbon, of course, for the book. And I believe there's a pocket. Yeah, there is a pocket in the back. It looks like a double pocket, actually. But let me see here. I have no nails anymore since I play harp. Okay, it does have a single pocket in the back. It's glued on and it looks like there's another pocket above it, but there is not. So that is the first th thing that I got and I will um, keep you posted on how it works out. It's so smooth. It would It's smoother than hot pressed watercolor paper, to be honest. So it would be great for drawing, really great for drawing. The next thing I got was another pack of frames. Um, I had bought a um, print at an art show recently, so I got some more 11 by 14 frames. They have glass in them, and uh, they're not just nice little frames, and you get a set of four, I believe, four or five, I forget. And um, this is the print that I bought, and I bought it for my husband for Father's Day. And this is our local lighthouse. She did it in graphite, and then when she did the print, she added the red to the roof, which is how this uh, looks. The brick is kind of a yellowish beige brick. This is all stained from the water levels going up and down. And then the lighthouse, the house 
itself has the red roof. So I got him that print, but I did not have a frame for it. So now I'm going to frame it and give it back to him. I gave it to him for Father's Day. So he really liked it. He thought I did it though. And I'm like, sorry, no, I didn't do that. That doesn't even look close to my style. Um, another thing I got that you guys probably don't care about is um, I got more film for my Instax printer, um, which is how I print these photos. I just send them from my phone or my iPad, and they're little Polaroid photos. So um, I bought more film for that. And, uh, yeah, so that's good to have. Then... <laughs> Another thing I got was a projector. I've been wanting to get a good projector for a long time. This one is by Awking. I got it on um, Amazon, and it was inexpensive. I think it was $69. Some of them go for a few hundred dollars. And part of the problem with these projectors is when you want to project television or movies onto a wall, there are a couple that won't let you do it. I believe Netflix is one. I don't know if Amazon Prime lets you or not. Um, Hulu will let you. I think Disney Plus lets you. But anyway, the way around that is to use a Roku. And then you can go right into your projector. But um, that's not what I bought it for, you guys. I bought it so that I could have... Um, something to project images on. When I want to do a large a large piece, I can just project the image, draw it right onto the paper, and then uh, look how small it is. I mean, it fits in my hand. I mean, it's so small, and um, it got very good ratings. So I will keep you posted on that as well. It also has a remote control if you were to use it for movies. Um, and of course it's got its cord and user manual and everything but what I want to use it for is to just project images so that I can transfer them in order to paint them and you may have heard that that's wrong some artists are snobs and they'll say that's wrong it's not it's not fair it's not your work well that's a bunch of BS it is fair and somebody I, I saw this guy on YouTube say he is a beautiful oil painter, I believe, and his, his work is just amazing. And he said, I use a projector. He said, um, anything that's going to make your work better is a good tool to use. So I thought, I'm going to give it a go. And it'll work well for me if I'm doing um, customer commissions like uh, pet, pet portraits. Um, I've done those in the past and somebody wants me to do a pet portrait again, although I haven't asked for a photo yet because I, the whole dog thing had me a little overwhelmed, but I'm getting better that way. So I'm going to use that in order to project the image. Then let's see what else I got here. I can't remember. Oh, I bought a few more. I bought more um, white signal pens. I go through these um, fairly quickly. The ring, you know, the ink doesn't last very long in these. So, um, and this is, I think I got the medium point. Yeah, this is just the medium point. There's a fine point and a broad, but these pens work so well. And I like to use them just to put finishing touches on, like maybe on my gouache paintings or my watercolor, like, uh, putting a little reflection in an eye or something like that in my sketchbook. I'll do that. Usually if I'm painting, I will paint around that area, um, especially if the eye is big enough. Oh, and I wanted to show you my new shirt. I think I'm going to need to stand up. This is, of course, the Starry Night picture in a van size style. And then this is what it says. I have no Monet for Degas to make the Van Gogh. <laughs> I love it. With gas prices as high as they are right now, I just had to get a t-shirt. And I've had to get some t-shirts because 
my t-shirts don't fit anymore. They're two sizes too big, so I had to go down a couple sizes on t-shirts. And I'm going camping soon. So, um, I needed some t-shirts for camping, and I got a couple others. I got a harp shirt, too. I'll show you when I wear that. And That one's kind of funny. And then, um, oh, what else? I was going to get another artist palette shirt. I have one, but it's too big now. It's two sizes too big, so I'll probably be getting rid of it. Um, or using it for a sleep shirt. I don't know. I usually use tank tops, but um, okay. Then the last thing that I wanted to show you was the surprise from many, many, many moons ago. I, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I bought something. I bought something on Facebook Marketplace and it ended up costing me more than I wanted to spend, but um, the piece itself was like $40. I couldn't beat it because some of them online were a lot higher priced, but I had to pay for the shipping. So by the time I got done, it was probably $100 or more, but check this out. It's an old vintage sewing box. And looks like this. It has four legs that go on the bottom but I'm going to use it for traveling to carry all of my supplies in, and then they can just sit in my RV right on the floor, and when I need something, I can gather it up. So I'm going to turn the camera around, and I'll show you exactly what this box does. Some of you women who are sewers probably know these boxes because they were very popular back in the day. They're very um, vintage. So um, anyway, <clears throat> I didn't really care for the dark candle and the dark wood. I wanted it all one color, but <laughs> but uh, this one was in the best shape. And then when I got it, I found that it wasn't in great shape at all. My husband had to fix some of the hinges and stuff, but he's handy, so he was able to do it. Let me turn the camera around. Okay, so here's the box, and it opens just like a a uh, fishing tackle box would be. Here are the legs that go on the bottom. So it raises it another, oh, I don't know, 10 inches or so off the floor. But if you can uh, see, these sides telescope out like this, and they're very awesome. Let me give you a look down inside so that you can see how much room I will actually have up here. There are two sides, two pockets, uh, and on this side there are three. This would probably be a nice spot for brushes and then maybe some extra paints. Uh, then I have space here and here, and then, of course, I have space down here. So I'm going to go pack some things in it, and you can see exactly uh, what I'm talking about for um, taking it on a trip. You get the idea. I need to take more rags along too, but this is everything I've got packed so far. Um, I do have some things in this are like my portable brushes, my silver black velvets, uh, and my synthetic ones. And over here, colored pencils. I have a lot of pens in this bag. That goes with me when I go out uh, plein air painting. Uh, I decided to bring a little palette along just so I'd have it if I was painting back at the camp. I might take that out because that's heavy and uh, pretty much unnecessary when you have a traveling palette. The palette that I would use for the most part would just be my um, folio palette that I carry with me, uh, this one, because it contains so many colors, contains everything that I would need. And there's plenty there. I'm going to fill some of these in. Hopefully I've got the colors to fill those in before I leave so that they're all full. And I will have plenty of watercolor. Not that I've ever run out. But the only problem with these are that they are aluminum. 
uh, that's a plus because they will never rust. Although these little, the little pans are stainless steel, so they will rust. But um, the, you can't magnetize them to anything because aluminum is not magnetic. So um, what I would have to use is on my whatever I'm drawing with, I would just have to use a binder clip and hold it down with the binder clip. And that would work just fine. But I do have another surprise coming that I want. I will be showing you very soon. Um, and I also want to show you some other things that I got that I forgot to show you that was going to be in another video, but I messed up the video, so I never posted it. I'll show you those things right now. I got some new gouache colors. Um, People have been asking me for years, have you, when it comes to gouache, have you tried schminka gouache? And I always told them, no, I've never tried it, but I hear that it's very good gouache. It's a little more on the expensive side, though. But then I decided to buy some colors. I got a color called Delft Blue. I got Helio Turquoise. Never had a turquoise for my gouache, although I always would use, um, not Prussian, phthalo blue to make my turquoise. Then I got English red instead of burnt sienna because I have burnt sienna. And I got this titanium gold ochre. So those are those four colors. Then I got some um, Shinhan professional gouache. I think they just came out with this recently. I've never seen it before. It's professional gouache, and it I got permanent yellow, ultramarine deep, carmine red, and moss green. And these colors are very cool, except for the moss green. That's really more of a warm green. But otherwise, these colors are cool. These colors are warm. So they're kind of opposites as far as the spectrum goes. So now let me show you. I accidentally skipped a couple pages when I did this. Maybe I did it on purpose, but I don't think so. Uh, where is it? I know that I put it in my... Hang on a second. I don't want you to see a couple of these because... Oh, here it is because um, it was for a video, and I haven't posted the videos yet. I'm really behind on editing. But these are the colors. Now, um, this is the Schminka side, and this is the Shinhan side. So this is the Titanium Golden Ochre, or Gold Ochre. This is the English Red. This is the Helio Turquoise. Turquoise and then the Delft Blue. And then I took them and made um, different swatches with different colors to see what other kinds of colors I could get if I used a limited palette of like these four. And I was able to get some really pretty grays to browns and some nice greens. I actually got a green that pretty much matches this moss green over here and then um, more grays. And that's pretty much it for those. So over here, I have the Shinhan colors. And you can see how warm these are in comparison to these. So my permanent yellow is a cool yellow, which I'm very happy with. It's great for mixing. Um, I mean, you can mix with uh, warm yellows and get some mossy color greens and stuff like that. But oranges start to get a little on the browner side, more like this. Um, then I've got the ultramarine deep down here, the moss green right here, and then the carmine, which is also a very cool red, more of a rosy red. But you can see then, mixing these two colors, the oranges that I came up with, this is the green. Um, mixed some yellow in with the green to see if I could get something close to linden green by Winsor & Newton, and I can. The ultramarine deep, I also mixed with... Um, yellow and got these colors and then the ultramarine deep with the carmine and I got some purples so as far as the the palette goes I really love these colors the Shinhan colors I like these I wanted to try them I really wanted to try helio turquoise and I saw another youtuber who got the titanium ochre so I liked that 
the blue I was interested in because it's a deep blue. It almost reminds me of anthraquinoid blue by um, Daniel Smith or anthraquinone blue. Anyway, so these were the colors that I got. And I did a video, but then I missed the, messed the video up. So now you're seeing the colors that I got, and I put them in my gouache palette, which you all have seen many times, this travel palette that I have, um, which will be going with me on vacation. I made myself a swatch card. So I have, I brought... Cornacridone Violet, which was M. Gran, and then I have the Schmincke Carmine, I mean the Shinhan Carmine, I put Schmincke, and that's not supposed to be Schmincke, Permanent Yellow by Shinhan, Linden Green, which is by Windsor & Newton, Viridian, which was M. Graham, um, then I have here Olive Green by Windsor & Newton, Sap by Windsor & Newton, Moss Green, by Shinhan. Then I have the Helio Turquoise, the Prus Prussian Blue by M. Graham. Uh, let's see. Marine, Ultramarine Deep by Shinhan. Delft Blue by Schmincke. English Red by Schmincke. Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke. See, it's a lot deeper than Yellow Ochre is. And then Naples Yellow, which I use a lot for my sand. Um, might add a little white to it or whatever. And then I have Sepia by Windsor Newton. So those are all of the colors that will go with me on vacation. And some of you have asked, do you end up with mold here? And I did when I left it closed and there was too much water left in it. But since then, uh, I've been using it, but it's getting a little dry. You can see a little film on the top of, top of a couple of these. That's not mold that is brown from my other thing but um, what I've been doing is I put some drops of clove oil into my water and then before I put it away I just spray it lightly and apparently it's antiseptic so it um, just sits on top and prevents mold from growing so that's what I've been doing with that and then of course then this seals uh, I'm going to leave it open right now so that it does not end up moldy because I've got too much water in it. That's how they form is by having too much water. So that's it for my, um, my haul video and I do have another one coming up very soon. That one is going to be very exciting so stay tuned i'm going to be taking this object with me on vacation and giving it a run for its money to see how i like it so stay tuned and you'll see what it is so if you like the video don't forget to give me a thumbs up it really helps me out and if you're not subscribed consider subscribing i'm gonna have uh some video coming up from my vacation uh, my vacation, though, isn't until actually the day of my surgery. I don't know if I told you guys I'm having surgery on my leg to try to release the nerve that's causing my nerve palsy uh, in my muscle and uh, the foot drop. So they're going to try to fix it. Um, I have to see a cardiologist first because my stress test was abnormal. And if they clear me for surgery, then I can have my surgery on the 22nd and we leave on vacation like the minute I get in the car. So, um, and then we have to bury my dad the next day and then we go on vacation for a week, just traveling around Michigan really because of gas prices and stuff. We're going with my sister and brother-in-law and I'll be seeing my, his sister's art studio. I'll see if she'll let me record a little bit of it so you guys can see her studio. It's inside a barn, a big old barn. Um, and then, and she's a different kind of artist, more of an illustrative type of artist. I'd love to show you some of her work, but I don't know if she'll allow me to show it because she doesn't think she paints well. And she comes from an artist family, for goodness sakes. But anyhow, I'll show you my sister and brother-in-law's trailer because she painted it and it's like all illustrated all the way around all four sides. So that would be cool too. But that won't be, you won't be seeing any of those videos until I get back in August, but those will be coming up 
and hopefully I'll have some plein air painting. I will have some uh, um, art studio video, the trailer video, all that. So it should be a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully I'll be walking okay. I have to go back into a boot for two weeks, he said. I'm going to try and see if we can get around that, like with a tennis shoe or something. That would be nice. But I don't know what he's going to say. So um, I think that's everything I wanted to tell you. Everybody, remember, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon. And most of all, be kind to each other. Uh, take care. God bless you. Love you all. Bye-bye.